story of Tomas, who became a hook. It all began on the day Tomas, while sitting with his dog at the side of a lonely road, saw a farmer in distress. Some hooks, watching the farmer, also thought he had a lot of rice. Rice which they could use for themselves. Tomas, believing in kindness, was happy that he could help the farmer. <laughs> Having worked very hard, Tomas decided to go home, for he was hungry and wanted to eat. Watching Tomas, the hook leader thought of a plan, a plan to make Tomas a hook and get the farmer's rice at the same time. And so he sent one of his men after Tomas. Tomas lived on a simple farm, and though he didn't have much rice, he never thought of complaining. But fact, the hook, had come to plant seeds of hate in Tomas's mind. Fat told Tomas that he saw him help the farmer on the road and that he had come to help Tomas. Fat told Tomas about life in the hills and made promises of great things. He asked Tomas if he would like to join them. Tomas and his dog didn't like the idea of leaving their home, but Fat talked of great doctrines and world revolutions. He talked of politicians and laborers and of farmers too. Yes, said Fat, if you join my friends the Hooks, they will show you how to get as much rice as the farmer had. Fat talked on and on. Hour after hour. The dog fell asleep. Tomas fell asleep. But not Fat. He was determined to recruit Tomas into the hooks. And finally, Tomas filled with Fat's promises and fooled into thinking that to be a hook would be a great adventure, decided to join his newfound friend and go to the hills to become a hook.
this is a hook. Always on guard, forever hiding, forever fearful of attack. This is the way they live, like animals in a jungle of fear and hate. The hook leader fills Tomas with lies. He tries telling them of their great cause. The leader's followers listen to his every word like puppets. Tomas is impressed by the leader's empty words and promises. The leader tries convincing Tomas that no one farmer should have as much rice as the farmer on the road. The other hooks help convince Tomas. And so Tomas, overpowered by all this talk, agrees to help his newfound friends to get the farmer's rice. <laughs> Tomas felt the hooks were right, and so he tried convincing the farmer to give up some of his rice. But the farmer knew better. He explained that only through hard work and peaceful living was a man entitled to claim the fruit of his labor. The leader, knowing that Tomas would fail with words alone, used him to set a trap, and without Tomas knowing it, was now ready to go into action. The farmer refused to give up his rice. Knowing Fat to be a hook, the farmer stood up for his rights and told Fat to get off his land. The farmer knew that they had come to take his rice and they would use force if he refused to give it to them. Yet, in spite of this, he stood up for his rights. Tomas looked over at the body, filled with fear, with confusion. He tried to say something. He never thought this would happen, that they would kill, kill. He never thought, he never thought. Filled with horror and shame, Tomas left. He never thought, he never really thought they'd kill. Lonely and friendless, Tomas sat in the dark, in fear and shame. While the hooks slept around their blood-stained rice, 
Tomasa's only friend, came to see his master. And Tomas was happy, very happy, for now he could share his problem. Tomas looked at his rice and thought of the dead farmer. He now realized what it meant to be a hook, what it meant to live like an animal. He suddenly understood that with no more rice than he had before, he had lost his freedom. What good was the rice now? He was trapped. He wanted to go home. to start over again. But he was trapped. Trapped by his own lack of reasoning. He was one of them, a killer like the rest. A prisoner who had lost his freedom and his right to be called a Filipino. Tomas was now a hook. 